Our next speakers are Annika Thornburn and Raymond Vessels from BCX. Their topic is applying TOGAF in the public sector. Both Annika and Raymond have attended a number of enterprise architecture forums which are hosted by the Open Group over the years. Annika heads up the business consulting unit within BCX and she's responsible for areas such as business analysis, etc. She also has profound experience in the structural design of business processes. Her process experience started with a move to systems development into business analysis. Annika was the head of the BCX Business Advisory Services consulting team since 2016 and now heads up the BCX Business Consulting team since May 2018. Raymond is an advisory consultant with a background in designing the future digital platforms for organizations and assisting business and IT to visualize and realize this through proven abilities to plan, coordinate, deliver, and complete complex architectures and solutions. Raymond has a total of 40 years experience in information technology and his industry experience ranges from 12 years in mining 10 years in banking, 11 years in financial services, and two years in telecommunications, and 16 years in IT consulting services. His skills include digital business, program and project management, business case development, change assurance, CIO advisory services, IT strategy development, enterprise architecture establishment, development and management, information architecture, and IT governance. Good day. I'm Annika Thorgren from BCX, and thank you for the opportunity for us to share our experiences with you uh, today. If we can look at the agenda, um, I will just uh, mention as to where BCX fits into the bigger Talcom group and also um, share with you our senior enterprise architecture team. I will inter and then I will hand over to Raymond who will take you through an introduction of the GUA framework and also a, a case study as to where we find um, a, a, the typical GUA and TOGAF deliverables. I will then identify some of the gaps that our customers and ourselves has experienced in the past and during our initiatives and hand over back to Raymond who will then show you how we have modernized our approach. So the BCX group and the EA team, we are part of the bigger Telcom group. We were taken up or joined the Telcom group in 2018. And further to the group, there's OpenSurf, Telcom, Yellow Pages and, and Gyro. Our um, senior enterprise architecture team is a small team of five uh, people and um, of which m myself and Raymond are here today to share our experiences with you. I'm going to hand over to Raymond now to um, do the introduction to GUIL. Thank you, Annika. I'm going to be introducing the GUIL framework to the audience. There were three events in the late 2000s leading up to 2008 that led to the development of the government-wide enterprise architecture framework. Um, there was a variety of frameworks and methods in used by government to develop ICT plans and architectures, and obviously an inconsistency of plans across governments and agencies. The Government Information Technology Officers Council, or GITOC, created a standing committee on architecture, and they started developing the government-wide enterprise architecture based on TOGAF 8, TOGAF 9 came out, and subsequently a, a, a complete revamp was undertaken uh, to develop the GUIA based on the initial TOGAF 9. That led to the publishing of the Government-Wide Enterprise Architecture Framework version 1.2, which is still in use today. And what it effectively did was proposed a minimum set of standards for enterprise architecture based on TOGAF. Subsequently, in 2010, they issued an implementation guide which was a deliverable guideline linked to TOGAF 9. And in 2012, the Department of Public Service and Administration issued what was, is called the Public Service Corporate Governance of Information and Communication Technology Framework, or CGICT. And that mandated ICT planning and governance requirements and gave a lot of impetus to ICT planning. The GUIA framework is very strongly aligned to TOGAF 9, so the scope of that comprises an enterprise architecture development process or method guided by the TOGAF ADM, which is the architecture development method, the enterprise architecture deliverable framework, and an enterprise architecture dictionary. The deliverable framework defines a minimum list and format of enterprise architecture models 
It covers the very familiar TOGAF approach of for baseline and target architectures across your business architecture, data architecture, application architecture, technology architecture, and implementation plan. And also takes care of your pre preliminary vision and views in terms of setting up of architecture, creating principles, and the subsequent opportunities and solutions phase, and implementation plans where we develop our roadmaps and migration plans. The implementation guide is actually a very good document. It provides guidance to the government CIOs and what they call GITOs, which is the Government Information Technology Office, Offices, and enterprise architecture practitioners to establish and manage an EA capability. And this pro provides guidance to the EA capability to use the government-wide enterprise architecture framework as a means to develop an enterprise architecture plan for a department or program of government. The areas of governance it provides is segmentation and scoping based on TOGAF, enterprise architecture principles are proposed, and very importantly, a set of EA models and samples and templates are, are, are shown, as well as the ADM based on TOGAF, and it correlates also for government the difference between enterprise architecture and master planning initiatives. This framework was proven quite successful in delivering consistent future architectures and as evidenced in presentations to the SA Open Group chapter. So there was a provincial government department that gave an overview of experience based on nine provincial departments, a public entity and a municipality, showed the business value derived, explained key lessons learned and provided a whole set of example models. And that particular presentation gave a lot of insight and impetus to subsequent developments as that was referenced quite widely. There's a local government example which, in which a city process model was developed. They had a very unique foundation architecture and common reference architecture which provided an integrated view of processes, channel access, presentation, compositions or integration, applications, data, security and compliance, which gave a, 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 a view of how a model may look uh, under the GUIA framework. And a very good example from a government agency which applied to, to GUIA and TOGAF, but also went into some of the good practices like Ross and Wheel's enterprise architecture strategy approach, and they used the Zachman framework. So through the open group chapter, there was a lot of exposure to the possibilities that one can develop using GUIA. So just to give you an example, I mentioned the CGICTPF framework, which is the policy that the government came out with. So what the policy did was it mandated ICT planning and government's requirements, and it gave government a set of target dates for specific plans to be produced. It incorporated the King 3 Code of Good Governance, the ISO 38500 Standard for Corporate Governance, and TOGAF as the fundamental underlying model. And that provided impetus to architecture and IT strategic planning efforts. The challenge or the, the customer we dealt with was a large government department that required their master plan to be reviewed and updated in accordance with GUIA. And while reviewing it, we noted that it was very technology focused and IT found it very difficult to fund the plan as they didn't have the buy-in from the top levels of management. So the plan was difficult for executive management to consume and to link the priorities in the master plan to the corporate strategy priorities. And so the task was to develop a plan at the right level, but still contain the detail necessary to cost and implement the ICT initiatives. And so what I'm gonna show you is while the CG ICTPF helped organizations to structure how they develop a strategic plan and maintain a good view at the corporate governance of IT level, which deals with board and executive management, and at the management layer. Unfortunately, the GUIA deliverables um, were not that interesting. So what happened was the CG ICTPF then provided perspective and insight into IT governance and effective planning and positioned architecture well. So, so what the chief directive there was that at the corporate governance of IT layer, executive management would do and, and give direction such as the IT vision and mission and strategic themes, uh, strategic objectives, and the view, look at the guiding principles for IT, whereas at the management level, one would develop the enterprise architecture and roadmap in support of the strategy, uh, the financial plans, roadmaps, uh, migration plan, implementation plan. 
And although that worked very well and it helped the executive to buy in and management to pitch things at the right level, the GUIA deliverables provided value, but they lacked a cohesive view of the architecture. Uh, according to the client, they wanted to follow GUIA fully, which we did, but we felt that there was something missing uh, out of that. So while we produced a services model, uh, technology reference model, application portfolio, and gaps and roadmap, we felt that that cohesive view was missing. And that's when we had to sit down and analyze the gaps. So over to Annika, who will take you through the gaps. Thank you, Raymond. Um, now for the gaps. Um, during our um, initiatives that we ran and, and our experiences, we found that um, there was gaps in the frameworks for certain deliverables. One of those is the holistic view of the organization. Our customers were struggling to see that total integrate created or holistic view, if you want, of the organization. We also like to call it that eagle eye. If, if you fly high in the, uh, in the air and look down at the organization, you see the total integrated organization. And we needed to find a way to, to document that and articulate that to our customers. A second gap that we found was the customer c uh, citizen requirements. And um, it was really necessary to, to take into account the customer experience, the process experience, the user experience, and have a way to um, document that and to take into account any customer frictions, the problems they have. Otherwise, the to be and the, the, the way forward um, just means nothing. A third gap that we have identified is servicing other customers. And a method um, had to be found to expand on the GUIA and TOGAF deliverables and, and um, services model to better articulate the service delivery um, and, uh, to, to the customers and the customers' needs. So the last three of our gaps that we have identified and needed to fill and was expressed by our customers is best practice processes. Our customers needed uh, the, the knowledge that we are following best practices. They wanted to know what other departments in government does, even the private sector. And from our side, we also needed something to benchmark against and to implement those um, best practices for our customers. The fifth gap that we identified was life cycle and strategy. We needed a, far, a, a method to better articulate um, uh, and analyze applications, information stores and technologies and then um, of course identifying their respective um, strategies. And the sixth and last um, gap that we um, needed to fill in this digital age of course is the digital architecture. We needed a, a, a method to depict a digital architecture and a, and we needed a good practice model to base that on. So Raymond will now show you how we are filling those gaps for our customers. Thank you, Annika. We, we, we then sat down and, and uh, developed an approach to modernizing how we positioned the GUIA deliverables. And one of the things we always looked for is, is whatever we choose as a model, there needed to be a body of work out there that we could refer our customers to, which would give them confidence in that and actually help train them up in that particular approach. So we firstly had a look at the gaps and we adapted the GUIA framework to cater for those identified gaps. And what we built in was a business operating model, the customer services model, or sometimes called the target operating model for customer services. We had to incorporate customer experience journey mapping, uh, a more comprehensive business process portfolio, a life cycle and strategy analysis for information stores, applications and technologies. Technically, they are part of the reference model as provided by GUIA. And they had to also create a digital architecture view that was based on a good practice. So the business model canvas we used to adopt a model in terms of depicting the business model for an organization. And that takes the executive management through a process of depicting the services that they offer, that are offered to customers and beneficiaries within a community, uh, over channels and touch points, and that's a key part of the model, is executives decide how they're going to deliver their services as proper value propositions through the correct channels and touch points that citizens require. And they are offered through certain locations by organization units and roles, 
and perhaps through service delivery partners with business processes and governed by laws, regulations and internal corporate uh, requirements, compliance requirements. So that holistic view we just termed the business model, but very importantly it, it set the scene for the value propositions that and methods that services would be offered to citizens and customers. The next issue was to articulate how the customer experiences your, your services when interacting with the organization. And to do that, we blended a variety of models uh, uh, that are out there. And I encourage you to go and look for something that suits your particular circumstances. What you do need to articulate those, what is a customer's journey process? What do they initiate with you? How does the service uh, journey happen? And how does that particular service end? We need, you need to understand what is the customer trying to achieve, which is the goal, uh, the touch point and emotional response they get. And these touch points come uh, from uh, as guided in the business model and in the customer services model. What were they looking for? What are the features they experienced? And what features would they prefer? What is their overall experience rating? And what are the gaps and recommendations? And we typically conduct anything between 10 and 20 of these interviews now when we're dealing with a customer services oriented organization. So as you recall, the value proposition comes from the business models. The customer experience is an important part of that journey. The channels and touch points are then confirmed in both the business model and the customer services model. And very, very importantly nowadays, one must pay attention to the employee journey in support of the customer journey. We took and extended the as is and 2B services model that is developed out of GUIA and we made sure that we added the elements that would lead us to the proper planning of service delivery to customers. So we developed a, a model that depicted the layering of service delivery resources and technologies and forcing a digital first service model and minimizing handoffs. This sets the parameters for subsequent process development. So if you imagine a, a single model that executives have agreed to that explain exactly how customers would come through channels, experience touch points, what the first line is that they would hit, or what it be it a, a human or a thing, uh, and a thing, sorry, is an artificial intelligence technology or a, a bot or a, a, a reference library or something, how that would be handed over to second and third line, and what role business and external partners would play. And we found that creating this model set the scene for how processes would subsequently be developed. What we then did on the processes, is all models start with the customer at the top end, I think as everybody is familiar. We pay attention to the front office, but always ask the digital question first. first what is that digital touch point that will be hit or that the customer will first get to? or the responsible party for delivering that service. How does the back office uh, pick up that and minimize handovers and, and maximize returns uh, within a reasonable period of time? And what are the systems involved? And if you have to, um, what, how do you hand over to business partners? The third issue was around best practice processes and the APQC framework has been around for many years and provides both a process hierarchy and if you subscribe, you can get into the metrics as well. So that gives you a view of how good practice processes need to be developed. APQC is very good at the vision and strategy part and supporting processes. And for every customer, we have to develop the, the value chain uniquely. And the direct quote from one of our customers is, this provides me with a framework to manage the portfolio of processes within the organization as part of our business process management drive. We should ask ourselves why we are not performing some of these processes. So as we introduce this, and it is a tremendous amount of work for both ourselves and our customers, they, they very quickly see the value of positioning what they do within a broader best practice framework. Life cycle assessment is something we had to develop. So what we found lacking was although applications were positioned, one really needs to understand the facts about an information store application or technology. And typically, life cycles are provided by vendors or the IT support team. Every stage of the life cycle presents you with different degrees of business support issues, OPEX expenditure levels, CAPEX expenditure levels, maintenance costs and skills availability. And so we analyze the life cycle for all applications, information stores and technologies 
to order to preemptively identify when refurbishment or replacement should take place. And lastly, we had to find a digital architecture representation for which there was a body of knowledge and discovered that the TM Forum had created the open digital architecture as a blueprint for modern cloud-based open digital platforms. What the TM Forum did is, although they serve telecommunications companies primarily, they created the open digital architecture uh, to be open and applicable to all organizations. So what it provides is guides, uh, API specifications, integration methods, and toolkits. And we've adapted that framework to also incorporate any additional elements one needs to fully describe digital architectures. So what the ODA offers, which suits us from a services model and, and customer journey lifecycle point of view, is the systems of engagement, where you understand how you need to engage with your customers and you build in all those preemptive and front end items I discussed. Your typical systems of record, where you have parties involved, um, commercials and production areas typically. And then at the back end intelligence, which feeds the engagement layer in terms of uh, things like personalization, robotics, etc. I'd like to share a message from one of our current customers who are still in the process of developing their enterprise architecture at the moment. They're acknowledging that TOGEF provides a very sturdy framework and still speaks to crucial elements needed by organizations to have a clear view of the future even more so today with the issues of digital transformation. For those models that aren't part of the framework yet, and in this case uh, they mean GUIA and TOGAF combined, TOGAF should look into these and incorporate them since they align to their growth expectations. For them, agility is very important to survival of, of their organization and are asking how this can be incorporated into the framework so that TOGAF can continue to be the framework of choice. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Open Group for the opportunity to speak at this 25th anniversary event. We believe that GUIA needs to be extended to take advantage of the uh, great uh, new features in TOGAF 9.2, but also an appeal that there are a lot of well-established industry practices that are in general use that should perhaps be referenced and incorporated into the framework as well. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.